The Lord be with you. And also with you. Do we have a reader this evening? Yeah, Debbie is... Um, that would be wonderful, thank you. Would you? We want to keep Debbie in prayer. Debbie is um, usually with us, but she has bronchitis tonight. So she wasn't able to be with us. Thank you. Our call to worship. You stand as you are able. Do you want a prelude? Let's do a prelude. <laughs> yes, thank you. Let's do prelude. Thank you. To the Lord our God, the only, the only God, God, who turns bitterness and sorrow into joy and new life. The Lord is our strength and salvation. We rejoice in your holy name. Come and worship. Our Come and worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our hymn is uh, 510. I think it says 710, but it's actually 510, Word of God come down on earth.
the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, verses 5 through 9. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes through, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. There's a lot of politics going on in our reading tonight. And the prophets are all involved in speaking about what's happening with the politics. So what's taken place in this scripture reading before the reading that we have today, but what is the context for this? Is that God has instructed Jeremiah to make a yoke out of wood and leather, symbolizing the yoke that oxen wear when they are um, made to serve human beings. And so Jeremiah put this yoke on and he proclaimed that the people of Israel would be um, serving, and the other nations as well, would be serving Babylon. And God is the God who makes decisions about that kind of thing. Yeesh. I'm a little bit hesitant about what to ascribe to God and what not to ascribe to God. In this passage, what's happened is that Jeremiah has predicted that there will be further trouble and that the judgment of God that has begun with Babylon will continue and that the city will be laid waste and the people will be scattered. Babylon has already been coming and, and um, causing trouble for the people of Israel. And they have taken the king of Israel captive and taken him off. And so Hananiah predicts this prophet rises up and says, oh, the God's going to overthrow this, this kingdom of Babylon within two years. And he goes and he takes the yoke that is this wooden yoke that is a symbol around Jeremiah's neck. He takes it and he breaks it. He said, within two years, God is going to break this yoke of this foreign power. And all the money from the temple will be returned. All the gold that Babylon has taken will be returned to us. And the king will be restored. He will return to the land, be restored. And so he's proclaiming that very soon all this trouble is going to end. And Jeremiah says, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord break us from this yoke and bring back freedom and peace and, 
and our king and restore all the money that they've taken. But listen to this, just know this, that the prophets who've gone before us have not proclaimed peace, but they've given warnings about what's going to take place. Warnings that there will be war and pestilence and trouble ahead because of people who have turned away and forgotten God. And he predicts to Hananiah after this reading that Hananiah will die within the year. So he says, okay, if you've predicted peace, let's wait and see. If peace comes, it is the word of the Lord that you've spoken. If not, then we know that it's not the word of the Lord. And what we know that happened instead was they went into exile. They were scattered from their land. Their country was destroyed in war, and they were scattered into exile for 70 years. And Hananiah died within the year. This um, prophesying and trying to undo the prophecies and going back and forth and all these political things, it, it, and it's about the fear of the nation, it, it reminds me of the political battles of our parties with impeachments and unimpeachments, with trials and untrials, with trying to, you know, just... Uh, you replace one party with another and the goal is to go after the other and declare that these things are the will of God. And I think that what we hear in the will of, in the word of God tonight is that um, it is God who is the one who gives life. It is God who raises people up and it's God who brings people down. And we should serve and listen to God in this world. Today was a strange otherworldly day for anyone who's outside. It felt like those movies when you're on another planet. And I wondered as I was driving around with the smoke in the air, I wondered if a time would come when our earth would always be like this. If our earth would be covered with smog, with smoke, with fires, with the smoke of wars, you know, we went hiking up in the Pacific Crest Trail. We were there in this just crystal clear mountains, and we were far away, so we couldn't hear any machines or anything. This is on the, on the, in California, Northern California, with Kathy's parents. And we were hiking along, and I looked on the horizon, it was all brown. And I asked Kathy's uncle about that. He's a pilot, served many, many years as TWA. And he says, you know, that's a sight I'm used to that the smog from the earth will extend for miles and miles and miles. What we'd like is to turn to God and say, okay, we're going to be exempt from trouble. And God's going to favor us and overthrow our enemies and, and going to bless us and do good to us and, and squash the people that we are having a hard time in life. But in our reading tonight, that's not what... That's not what happens. Instead, God's way carries out and the people's actions, the consequences are lived out. The consequences that we have in our world of our political battles destroy our nation. The battles that we have between people destroy relationships. The inability to forgive in our families tears apart families. And the consequences are real. And oftentimes, you know, um, I've heard many times, and we talked about it on Sunday a little bit, that people say, well, the God of the New Testament is a God of love, and the God of Old Testament is God of judgment. That judgment is Old Testament stuff. We find in the New Testament that God is a God of mercy, but we still have God being killed in the New Testament. We still have treason in the New Testament. We still have betrayal in the New Testament. In the New Testament, what happens is that the whole nation is under the power of Rome. And it is a brutal experience under Roman soldiers. You know, Jesus said, you know, if someone asks you to walk one mile, walk with him too. 
And the soldiers could make them walk a mile, could make them, you know, take on burdens, could do all kinds of things. And Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount, going the extra mile. That when people are there to oppress us, instead of responding in kind, Jesus says to love. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Do good to them and bless them. That's a strange idea. Blessing our enemies. Blessing are those who, who oppose us. But isn't that how healing comes to this earth? By wars turning into blessings. By people who are opposed seeking to do good. There's a wonderful film based on the story of the, you know, World War II, when on Christmas Eve, is it, that the soldiers put down their arms and that the Germans and their enemies come together and worship and celebrate Christmas. And the, the officers who were not present, who were in another part of the country, then tell them to go ahead and continue the war against each other. But I think peace comes in this world by us putting down our arms, seeking to understand our enemies, seeking to, to increase peace instead of cutting people off. That's hard to do. And I don't have it all figured out. In the case of bullying, we had horrible bullying going on at the school that, that we worked at in, in India. And kids were beaten in the night other kids who were masked and they were beaten for um, being snitches. And as a counselor, I listened to the stories of some of the victims of the bullying and heard them having difficulty sleeping with the light off and listened to their fears, listening to these traumas that go on. The violence in our world brings tra violence, brings trauma, and brings suffering. And it's not easy answers to come through these things. I think that women who live in situations of domestic violence, you know, I, I always would listen and take their cues when I worked with them in upstate New York, worked quite a bit with that. Instead of telling the women what to do, you need to leave your husband, you need to do this, you need to do that. They were in the situation, they knew best. They knew the dangers of leaving, they knew what they could manage with that. But I think sometimes what was best was, you know, for them to be able to separate one of the, um, I heard a domestic violence worker say that the only time she saw pastors was when they would show up with the abusers and say that the victim needs to go home to the abuser. And the politics in this world is seeking to oppress and to squelch the voices and so to, to be, dominate those who, are, who we are opposed to, to silence their voices, to impose our will. And that's happening in this world of Jeremiah. And what you end up with is a smoke-filled world where the air is not clear. So we gather in the context of these things. And we seek to listen to God's voice more than our favorite prophets in the land. We listen to God's voice and we listen to God's word and we read and we come to God's presence. We come to God's house and we lift up the nations in prayer. We lift up our communities in prayer. We lift up Canada as it's fighting forest fires in prayer. We lift up people in war in prayer and ask that we might find the paths to peace. You know, for many years, I felt as one who'd grown up in South America and coming to the US that the idea was that other countries suffer calamities because they just don't have it quite worked out in life. They're weaker, they're backwards, they're ignorant. Third world countries are um, corrupt. I always heard that. And so that all of the things that they suffer in their countries were a consequence of their own actions. But I think that recently we can find that our country is not exempt from the fires and from the disasters and from the gun violence and from the other things. In this world, it doesn't matter where we go. We all equally need God. And the cry of the prophets is for us to turn to God, to repent, to change ways, 
was talking to someone this week about a celebration they're going to have. This person doesn't live here. Um, a celebration they're going to have, but difficulty with knowing who to invite to the celebration because there are troubled people in the families. Can we invite just some of the people and tell them that the rest of the people in the family is, are not invited? My response was, well, I've seen that happen before and it doesn't work very well. That the pain and the fighting and the division is only magnified. So I've been thinking about how do you invite over people when you might have those come along who are difficult and where there's pain. Can we have a shield of God about us? O oh Lord, you are our glory. You are a shield about us. You are the one who lifts our face. An imaginary shield about us that when people say things or do things that are upsetting to us, that that just won't penetrate because we are surrounded by the glory of God. On the way here this evening, I saw something that looked like cardboard rolling across the road. And what I realized it was, was a dog jumped out of the window of a car that was coming the other way and was rolling across the road. And, it, and, and so I slowed down to stop and the car behind me was not very happy that I was going slow. So he passed me and I was in that split instant praying for that dog and the owner who stopped to try to care for the dog and to pass the car that passed me um, missed the dog. And the dog got up and made its way back to the owner. And the owner was sitting there by the road, just caring for the dog and apologizing and loving the dog. And the dog was running on all four feet, which looked like a good sign, but it was a frightening moment. I can feel in those times my anger for the car who passed me. You know, if I'm slowing down, why don't you slow down? Today, when I was, I had to stop by the house to pick up something from my office. And all three entrances to our neighborhood were blocked with construction. <laughs> and I thought, don't you talk to each other? Two blocks down the road is another entrance to my community, and there's another construction crew that have it blocked off. He says, oh, I don't know. Well, maybe you can go that way and see if you go the opposite direction, if you can get out of here. I don't know where you can get out. But, you know, I, I was a little bit amused by that. But just aware that we can become angry and we can become angry at construction workers for doing their jobs and for slowing us down, for complicating our lives. And what they're doing is digging up the road and trying to put in better um, utilities to serve the neighborhood. Oh, they're making noise all night. They've got lights on the roads. They've got traffic that's being blocked. We can become bitter about things like that. Or we can become partners with the people in this earth and spread laughter and joy. I just came Monday from my, niece, my nephew's um, service, memorial service. And it was really amazing. He has a, a very severe, he had a very severe form of muscular dystrophy that just slowly robbed him of life. And they described how he would climbed the hill in their backyard to try to get up to the field where his friends were playing. And how he had that as a challenge that he would do with a smile on his face. I can do this and overcome that with a lot more effort than some. But my niece, when, when she spoke, and she has cerebral palsy, and it was hard to understand her for some, but what she said is, you know, I, I kept saying to him, I'm sorry. And I was imagining what was the I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're going through the suffering. I'm sorry. What were the apologies that she was saying to him as they are going through his slow death and hospice care? And he told her, stop saying I'm sorry. Just say I love you. And the message that was passed on from him in so many circumstances that I heard echoed again and again and again from all the different people who were speaking was someone who was not bitter about life, but instead was seeing every moment and every challenge as an opportunity to say, I love you, and I can overcome this. So in our experiences, we are not promised that we will be exempt from the famines and the floods and the wars and the divisions and the hatreds and the betrayals 
the cars who pass us up and swear at us, the curses. But we are called to be children of God who is a God who brings blessing to a cursed world, who brings healing to a broken world, who brings love to a world where there is lots of hate. May God be your glory, your shield about you, the one who lifts your face to the heavens to see the beauty around. Our destiny, the prophet says, is in God's hands. It's a good place for our destiny to be. May God surround you and give you peace. Let's have prayer. I didn't bring my pen. Oh, yes, I did. Are there prayer requests? Are there things that you would do? We want to gather around the font. Um, and those at home, welcome. And um, if you want to include some prayer requests, um, Kathy's there collecting those. So we can come and gather around to, to pray if you want to. Oh, Karen Selsey, you just got married. I know that's something that she was anticipating as her father was dying. Are there other things that you'd like to? Yes. Betsy, yeah. A little over a year. Robin, thank you, Robin. Deep pain. And God says we won't be exempt from those things. Those things happen. Sometimes people say, well, you didn't have enough faith or other kinds of scoldings, but that's not what God says. God says, I'll care for your husband, I'll care for you. At my niece's wedding, the same one, um, I said, well, this is God's will. And my brother said, yeah, I, don't, I don't pretend to speak for God. And I told him, well, I, I get paid to speak for God. <laughs> it's my job. Sharon. She's... Yeah, so she, you, what would you say about the three day? She's in hospice, right? It's a short hospice three days a week. Now. Oh, or maybe more than that. I got what they were working on. She was in bed. Okay, so she has hospice care at this beginning. And her mother, uh, we'd also prayed for her mother in the past, right? Or her daughter. Her daughter. Her daughter was uh, newly stuck. Her daughter. Her daughter's daughter had terminal up here, or not terminal. The cerebral tumors. It's, it's healing well now. They said that they've gotten it all. That's fantastic. Because we are praying for both. Okay. Debbie Six, <laughs> so Joyce has a procedure tomorrow. Robert has a procedure tomorrow. Debbie is has uh, bronchitis. <laughs> Kelly, yes. Kelly is in the hospital still, um, and. They found some of the problem and resolved some of the problem, but they're still checking That's out right. to find out what's going on. Okay. Shall we pray together? O oh Lord our God, in the beginning when this world was chaos, void, darkness, confusion, spirits 
of God moved over and stirred the waters and that was beginning of creation. And you spoke, let there be light. And there was light and things were transformed. As the waters hear the font move, may your spirit move over this chaotic earth. And may you have your creative work work in our communities, in our forests and streams, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, among those that we oppose or who oppose us. May your spirit begin a creative work anew each day. Lord, in your mercy. Wash us and cleanse us, O Lord, that we might be free. Free from the pain of divisions, betrayals, hurts, things that are difficult to forgive, people that we long to forgive us. May you cleanse us, anoint us, and care for us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as our airs are filled with smoke this night, we think of those who are battling fires. We ask that you would watch over them and care for them and protect them, that you would renew their strength, that you would protect them from harm, that you would bless their efforts to bring blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, for construction crews that work day and night on our roads, for people who this night as we rest and sleep will be working to take care of others in our hospitals and other places, bless them and care for them in their work. Thank you for all that they do that makes our lives richer. Bless their homes, their efforts this night. Give them times of rest. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, we thank you for your good gifts. We thank you for Karen Selsey and for her wedding this weekend, for that joy. Bless her marriage. Bless her days to come. May she, oh Lord, even as she's grieved the loss of her father, know that her father in your presence rejoices in you and shares her rejoicing. Bless their celebrating. Bless their creating new home. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, we come to you with those who have lost loved ones. We commend them to you. We commend the loved ones to you. This night, oh Lord, for Bessie, for Robin, for Lydia, and for those that we name silently or loud who have lost loved ones, for David Tibbetts, Lord, may you be their fortress and strength. May you be the one that shines light before them in days to come. Provide for all the needs each day. May your presence be a source of joy and comfort and strength. Even as we commend the loved ones to you and give thanks to you that in your presence there is wholeness, healing, celebration, and joy. What is it? that they are seeing and hearing and experiencing and participating right now as we pray. We thank you, O Lord, for paradise, for heaven, for goodness, for wholeness, for healing. We commend them to you as we wait a little longer before we are reunited because you have more gifts to show and give to us in this life before we breathe our last and join them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Sharon, O oh Lord, as she is finding that the treatments are not profitable in overcoming her illness. We ask, O oh Lord, as she begins her hospice care, that you would be her God her strength through the days ahead. And for family, O oh Lord, that you would care for them in this profound, profound time on holy ground.
Hold them in your arms, in your love. Go before them and open a way through the sea. Lord, in your mercy. For Joyce and for Robert, who both have procedures tomorrow for their health, we ask for skill and care and precision, healing in the procedures that are done, that your spirit would be upon those who are giving them care, that your healing would be at work. Just as people reached out to touch you for healing, we reach out with them to touch you for their healing. For Deb, who has bronchitis. For Kelly, oh Lord, who has had these internal injuries and illnesses and is finding a bumpy road in her recovery and healing. Thank you for the discoveries that have happened that have made her health improve and for those things that still remain. Show her the way and her care providers the way. Raise her to joy that she might with her energy and joyous ways return to work and family and care. Spread the blessings. We thank you, O Lord. She's the one who keeps our buildings here clean. Bless her for how she's blessed all of us. Lord, in your mercy. We commend Stephen Scott to you with colon cancer. For Eric and Marika. For Lori to Munbrun. We thank you, O Lord, for answers to prayer. We thank you that we belong to you, that our future is bright. We lift up Beth Grayson to you this day as she, in the treatment she has, hasn't even been able to swallow. Slow progression of disease that is very brutal. May your mercy surround her, may your light shine for her, may your joy rise up within her. Give her your peace, a peace the world cannot give. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for your healing and for answers to prayer. We thank you that Rayanne has been here playing tonight's music. She was in too much pain short days ago, and now she has been graduated from her therapy even. We give you thanks for progression of healing. You are so good. We love you, Lord. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Oh, yes. For Patty, who is part of our family, who's journeyed to Florida and seeking to set up a new home, but has been encountering a number of health issues, the need for re knee replacement and heart trouble. Oh, Lord, care for her heart. The grieving and the losses she has experienced, many kinds of losses. Care for her heart. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. Care for her and her limitations to get around without pain. Oh Lord, she is your daughter and we place her in the center of your care and we thank you. Oh Lord, that she is yours. This night, let her know that she is yours. That your strength is made perfect in weakness that your grace abounds, that she is your love, that you care for her. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. all Spread peace to one another. God's peace.
Please, Diane. Peace, Jeff. Peace, Jerry. Peace be with you, Peace Nancy. Peace be with you. <laughs> Give you a hair again. <laughs> <laughs> you better. Peace be with you. Robin, peace be with you. God's peace. <laughs> So Bessie was just saying that, that Robin was praying that there would be um, someone to uh, join in the grief group, that she's gone through grief and came and they didn't know, you didn't know each other was going to be here, is that right, tonight? And encountered each other, and, and Bessie is uh, coming interested in the grief group too, um, and, and brought them together with the same prayers tonight. Gandhi said um, that we need to be ready to be the answers to our own prayers. And here, grief, people in, in grief are asking for companionship and are the answers to prayer of others who are asking the same thing, right? God is so good. God's in heaven saying, oh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to set this up for them to see each other tonight. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ, broken for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, body and blood of Christ given for you. So even on the night when he was about to be killed, something new was happening. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brianne, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jerry, this is the body of Christ given for you. Diane, this is the body of Christ given for you. Doris, this is the body of Christ given for you. Robin, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bessie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Kathy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Ruth, this is the body of Christ given for you. Paul, this is the body of Christ given for you. For all of you at home, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is given for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos, calls across the cosmos, the God who calls across the cosmos, and speaks in the smallest seeds. Bless and keep and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Our hymn 546, To Be Your Presence.
Thanks be to God.